790 AM, 104.7 FM, KFJO.com, the KFJO mobile app. Follow 790 KFJO on Twitter. Like the KFJO Morning Crew on Facebook. Dr. Heather Mitchell, Animal Health Clinic, joining us now on the KFJO Morning Crew. If you guys have any questions for her, you can text them in to 35270. Good morning to you, Dr. Mitchell. Good morning. Always great to have you. Uh, your services with us. The information and education is, is so is so valuable. So we've been talking a lot about people getting their vehicles ready for this first real tough cold stretch. We've had a pretty nice winter so far. That's that that's coming our way. We uh, we wanted to bring you on to help our listeners say, oh, we got to remember our pets to get them ready for a real cold stretch. Where do we start? What are some key points, Doctor Mitchell? Yeah, those are very good. It's very good topic and and very good information to have. So I'll kind of start with our our older pets. So um, especially older dogs that might have some arthritis issues or mobility issues, making sure we have all their medication on hand and even um, kind of preparing our art our outdoors so they can get around easier. So sometimes that means shoveling them a path to get out to the yard or shoveling a path in the yard making sure there's not ice around um, so they don't slip because these older animals might already have some mobility issues and um, slipping on the ice or losing their footing could definitely make the condition worse too. So we want to make sure that um, they have easy access to go in and outside um, if we're going to get a lot of snow. When when you mentioned... Yeah, we've had a very good winter. (laughs) When you you bring up the you know slipping and and footing and their their feet or their their paws do you have to get them used to wearing i doggy booties or whatever <laughs> what's the proper term for it help me out that's why we have you dr yeah. mitchell can they just put them on I, or do they need to get used to them before the cold stretch i call them dog booties too so i think that's an okay term thank you um but uh, yeah, probably doing some desensitization to the doggy boots is going to be helpful um, because I know I've had um, a, a couple of my dogs had to had to wear the dog boots, and that's weird. <laughs> they don't really like it. <laughs> um, so definitely getting them used to it before we need to use them a lot is going to be helpful too because we, uh, <laughs> we make yeah, heated socks thing. for for people we got like heated boots and heated socks for people now do they have like um heated dog booties now i am not aware of that <laughs> but, <laughs> but i that bet could if, be a good possibility i bet if we asked the dog if they would rather have booties on or a cone on they're going to go with the booties every time oh, for sure <laughs> for sure I, I was wondering about cats because i've been seeing um posts in the next door app people either with cats that are missing and then one person even put something like hey this is my cat took a picture don't worry about it our cat likes to spend time outdoors in the winter are cats made for our winter weather not usually. Um, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, we do have a feral cat population, and some of, um, uh, you know, some I guess some neighbors' cats like to be outside as well. But they like they still are very susceptible to frostbite. They're susceptible to wind and wetness as well. So if we are getting rain, if we're getting some thick, heavy, wet snow, their coat is going to get wet, and if it's windy, they're going to get cold way faster so they still need to have protection of shelter um a place to get away from you know being on the ground so they don't get frostbite too sure dr heather mitchell animal health clinic joining us here on the kfgo morning crew if you have a question you can text it in to 35270 someone is wondering what you think about nail caps for cats their cat keeps scratching the carpet they can't get him to stop um and uh, wondering if uh if it's a good idea to try the nail caps Absolutely. I've used it myself. Um, They're very safe. They're pretty easy to put on. They use um, a glue to um, kind of make the connection between the plastic nail cap and the nail itself. They're supposed to stay on for about a month. Um, And uh, yeah, I think they're a a great alternative to declawing. Um, There's also some products out there called um, Feel Away Scratch. And it's really um, based on a pheromone that is supposed to help attract the animal to a, a thing that you want it to scratch on rather than your carpet Do they or work? your couch. Do they yeah, work? The, Do they? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the feel away scratch, I think, is about 90% plus. Interesting. Um, if you follow directions on how to use. 
and nail caps. I've used them myself um, in an adult cat that was scratching, and um, they 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 worked very very well. Okay, mm-hmm. let's go back to the cold weather. Doctor Heather Mitchell, Animal Health Clinic here on the KFGO Morning Crew. Now, Too Tall Tom is talking. I mean, we're going to get sub zero temps. You know, ten, fifteen, maybe twenty below in spots. Are dogs in particular? A lot of people continue to walk their dogs throughout the winter. Is it okay mm-hmm. to still walk them when it gets that cold? I I recommend that like anything less than twenty degrees is probably a, a very good cutoff to stop doing outside activity. Like they can go outside and go to the bathroom, but um, any longer than that, you know, that might be susceptible to some frostbite or some cold issues. Um, especially those uh, maybe smaller breed dogs or even dogs with a short fur coat. Um, you know, like greyhounds, um, pit bulls. They don't have a very thick fur coat, so uh, we might even need to put a little sweater on those guys when they go out in weather like this coming up because yeah. they just don't have the, the body mass nor the fur coat to keep them warm. Sure. A couple more questions coming in in the text club, Dr. Mitchell. Somebody is wondering if they can get a worm medicine into a semi-wild feral cat is what they're calling it. Oh, for sure. There's there's definitely ways. Um, often doing it in food is helpful. So like some canned food. Um, it seems to be a good trick trying to hide it in there oh, or make sure. little canned food into meatballs. Sure. Two uh, combination Cavaliers, Cockler Spaniels, um, which combination is great. I think that, okay, it's a great combination. They say they've always noticed that if they separate the two for any reason, uh, it's my, my, um, Oh, boy, we're jumping lines here, and I can't really see what the rest of their question was. I'm going to have to skip that one. I'm sorry if you want to try to retype that. we will. T- oh, here we go. For any reason um, one of us leaves, they seem to become very depressed. They keep their heads down. They don't want to do anything, including eating. Looks like depression in a person. Anything they can do about that? Um, it sounds like symptoms of separation anxiety. They can have separation anxiety from their owners or from their other companion in the house as well. So that's definitely something you want to bring up to your veterinarian. There's um, medications and training techniques. Um, Often those two things together can be very, very successful in helping the pet manage through that. Dr. Mitchell, older dog is coughing all of a sudden all the time, sometimes coughing up white foam. What could it be? Oh, gosh, a lot of things checking for any sort of medical condition, whether it be something contagious like a virus or bacteria. Um, Heart issues can cause coughing like that as well. Sometimes we've even seen if they have reflux issues, like if they have um, um, a little bit of stomach acid coming up in their esophagus, that can elicit some coughing too. So there's a lot of different potential causes. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry there, Dr. Mitchell. Greg is on the line um, and has a question for you. Quick, go ahead, Greg. What's your question there? Yeah, yeah. Years ago, uh, neighbors had a uh, orange tabby, a real thick fur orange tabby, and in the summer, uh, the cat used to like to eat that uh, canned tuna. And uh, in the summer, they used to have to take him into uh, have him, uh They used to put him put him to sleep, put him under, and they used to have to cut these knots out of his uh, back and his side. And uh, when they do this, he, he would look like a lion because they would they would pretty much no. shave his back. And yeah. it was really cute. He looked like a lion, whatever. Do you see much of that still with uh, with uh, knots and uh, uh, on, on like thick fur caps? And I'll hang up. Oh, on for, that. yeah, very good. Yeah, that, that's very, very much still a problem, especially in a medium or long haired breed cats. Um, if they aren't able to do a lot of grooming themselves, or even if their owner has a difficulty doing daily brushing with them. Sometimes they have to be shaved um, and get a little haircut almost. And it's called a lion cut, too. They, <laughs> they look super cute. Interesting. So that still does happen in those breeds that have a lot of long uh, cat fur that can get mats mm. in it. Dr. Mitchell, questions keep coming in and coming in and coming in. If um, our listeners have any questions for you, what's your number over there at Animal Health Clinic? Oh, sure. Animal Health Clinic, we're open Monday through Friday, 730 to 530. Our number is 701-237-9310. Thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. You bet. My pleasure. Thank you. You bet. Yeah, protect those animals as the weather gets colder here. That's Dr. Heather Mitchell, Animal Health Clinic.